Yes, yes, hey. Oh, hello, hi, okay. Are we done? We're still not done, okay. Well, are we done? Oh God, now the other one's coming. This video is a total disaster. Hello, yes, hello. Hey friends, it's Robin. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing part two of my fantasy romance recommendations slash TBR video series. I'll workshop that for the next time. I completely butchered this, but today we are talking about angels, demons, and gods. So I decided to break this into its own section, mostly because I, <laughs> I have a bunch of books that fit into this on my TBR. And I had so many of them that I decided to make it its own section. So this isn't technically its own subgenre of fantasy. In fact, the way that I'm going to break this up is into low fantasy recommendations and then some high fantasy recommendations so that we can kind of talk about the differences since I'm not going to be talking about high fantasy itself until the final round of this. So for all of the books that I'm going to talk about here, I'm going to kind of chat about why they fit into low fantasy versus high fantasy. But what these all have in common are they have main characters that are either angels, gods, or demons. This is going to cross over pretty heavily with the next round. Now my cat is bumping my tripod. Can you stop? This is going to cross over pretty heavily with the next video, which is monster romances. So a lot of these, especially the ones with demons, could, could very easily cross over into the monster recommendations. But for me, I do not consider a monster romance something that features angels, gods, shifters, vampires, things like that, because most of these look mostly human. Everyone has their own definition of what is going to fall into the monster romance category. But for me, these don't really fit into the monster romance category. So I decided to make them their own section since they didn't really fit in anywhere else. And if I put them in with paranormal, that video is gonna get too long. So we're gonna start with the low fantasy and work our way into high fantasy. So let's just get right into the recommendations. So the first one on here is a book that I've already talked about, but I do wanna mention here, and that is the Guild Hunter series by Nalini Singh. There's a lot of books in the series, but they are so worth it, and the audiobooks are fantastic. They are narrated by Justine Eyre, who is one of my favorite narrators. And these, like, are available at most libraries. They're also available on Hoopla, so they are pretty easy to get your hands on. But this is one of my favorite series featuring angels of all time. I love that there are a bunch of different types of angels. I love that you get to see the angels in like their own environment as well as in our world. And I just think it's so well done. And this was the first book that I ever read featuring angels. And so it's one that I always kind of come back to to recommend for anyone else that is looking to get into a romance featuring angels. The next one that I'm going to recommend is a YA title that is written by an author that writes both YA and adult. And that is Jennifer L. Armentrout, and that is the Harbinger series. This author is so well loved at this point for her adult romances, but I have actually, unpopular opinion, preferred her YA romances. This is one of my favorite fantasy trilogies ever. I have read this entire trilogy two or three times. This is following our heroine who is losing her eyesight. She has a degenerative eye disease. Because of that, she is paired up with a gargoyle. And this gargoyle is her protector. And she has always lived amongst these gargoyles. And she isn't entirely understanding of all of her abilities. She does have some magical abilities, including the ability to see the dead. And she needs to team up with another gargoyle when her protector goes missing. She is bound to this protector, and when he suddenly goes missing, she needs to go and search for him and try to find him, and she teams up with another gargoyle. Which doesn't sound like there's going to be angels in here. However, the gods in this world are archangels, and they are the archangels that you know, and angels eventually get introduced even more as the books go on. I don't want to explain too much because it is kind of a spoiler, but angels do come quite into play in this series. This is probably my favorite series by this author, which again, unpopular opinion, but I just, I love this series. I think it is so well done. I think the characters are really fantastic. The romance is so freaking sweet. I love it so much. The twists, the turns, the reveals, 
everything is done very, very well. On top of that, we have the Covenant series, also by JLA, and it is still one of my favorites. This is all about gods. And so we are following this heroine who grew up in a magical world. And when she was young, her mother took her away from that magical world and she grew up in the human world. And her and her mother have been on the run ever since. And her mother dies at the beginning of the book. And she ends up going back to, I want to say it's in North Carolina. And it is a like campus where all of these people with magical ability abilities live. And when she gets back there, she starts attending the academy once again. And the uh, gods in this world, or the people that are ruling over everything, are your like traditional Greek gods. Things kind of go from there. I don't want to talk too much about the like overarching plot because the plot changes drastically from what is in book one throughout the rest of the series. So the first book is really about this heroine going back to this campus and figuring out what is going on, why her mother died, how she ended up back here, why she was taken from this place in the first place. And then from there, the story kind of takes off. Like I said, this is one of my favorite series by this author. And I have enjoyed these YA titles so much more than her adult romance titles. So if you have given her adult romance as a try, and you weren't like the biggest fan or you thought the world wasn't as well developed, I highly recommend trying these ones out because I thought that these were fantastically done. Another book that I have talked about a lot recently in a lot of videos because it just it just keeps coming up and it's one that I want to keep re recommending and that is Sing Me to Sleep by RM Virtues and this book features demons. So in this one we are following a heroine who is suffering from PTSD brought on by a home invasion and she is struggling with her sleep. Her usual, my ring light died, so we're gonna go with natural light. Hopefully the sun cooperates. But whenever she does fall asleep, she suffers terribly from night terrors. And one night she goes to sleep, falls asleep, and she wakes up and there is this demonic form over her and she ends up having a romance with a sleep paralysis demon. And the reason I threw this one here instead of into the monster romances, it could very easily have fallen into the monster romance one. However, in this world, there is a demon realm uh, that we get to see. And so I specifically brought this one into this because of that demon realm. This does end... I don't want to say a cliffhanger. It's not a cliffhanger. The romance itself wrap, wraps up, but it really opens up this demon realm for future books. And I just found out recently from Heather from Hia Booktubes that RM is actually working on the sequel. So I'm very excited to get more of this demon realm and this demon race. So that's why I threw it here, break up some of the monster romances from the demon romances. Like I said, these cross over pretty heavily. And the reason I threw this one into the low fantasy instead of the high fantasy is because the majority of this book takes place in the real world. Once we get into the high fantasy one, we'll talk about books that bridge the gap between real worlds and fantasy realm. But this is one of the ones that does that. So you do get a high fantasy demon realm at the end, but the majority of this one is set in the real world. The next book that I'm going to recommend is The Hades Trials, and this is written by an author duo, and I'm totally blanking on the author names right now, but this is a Hades and Persephone retelling. This is a completed trilogy that is all available on KU, and this is the perfect transition recommendation because this is one of those books that once again kind of crosses that line between low fantasy and high fantasy. So we open up in this book with our heroine who is in the real world. She is a regular everyday person and she ends up finding her way into the underworld. And once she is in the underworld, she ends up having to go through some trials to become the wife of Hades. And a lot of things are revealed in there. You get to see and meet a lot of your classic Greek gods and goddesses. Trial element is a big portion of this, which I really enjoyed. And so this really walks the line, like I said, between that low fantasy and high fantasy, since you do have segments of this book that are taking place in the everyday world. And then you have the underworld, which is a totally fantastical world. This is often called portal fantasy, and it can really be categorized in either low or high fantasy. It just kind of depends on who's recommending it and where they want to put it. 
but it can technically fall into either. So that's why I put it right here before we transition to some high fantasy recommendations. So first of all is the Hades and Persephone saga by Scarlett St. Clair. This is going to be covering both the Touch of Darkness, Hades and Persephone series, as well as the Game of Fates series. One is told from Persephone's point of view, and the other one is told from Hades' point of view. This is not set in our real world. I do believe in this world the human realm exists, but we are set in a totally fake world with fake characters and gods and goddesses and all of the things, but they do live amongst humans as well. So this is another one that kind of crosses that line, but while the human realm exists in this book, we don't actually ever really experience it. We just know that it exists. This is obviously a Hades and Persephone retelling. I want to say there are a couple more books left in each of these series. The original one was the Touch of Darkness series, and that is told from Persephone's point of view. And then we got the spin-off series, which is the a Game of Fate series, and that is told from Hades' point of view. I do want to mention that even though these are following the same timeline and we are following the same couple, they are quite different stories. So Hades is very much so doing his own sort of thing in his books. He has his own plots. And while they overlap with what is happening in Persephone's story, these two main characters spend so much time apart that the plots for each of the corresponding books don't really overlap. You get to see a lot of kind of what is going on behind the scenes. There is a lot of political maneuvering going on in Hades books that you don't get to see in Persephone, which I have very much enjoyed. The next one is another one where I believe the human realm exists, but we are not seeing it in this specific book, and that is The Witch's Heart. And this is a Norse mythology romance. And in this one, we are following a witch who is in love with Loki and it is their romance life story. This is a very epic story, so the timeline of this is massive. Um, we are meeting our heroine when she is exiled from the kingdom, and she finds herself in a forest where she meets Loki, and the two of them have this building, budding romance over uh, centuries, I believe. They end up having children, and kind of what becomes of them and their love. I really, really loved this. I thought the way that this romance was done, the queer representation in here, the way that the mythology and folklore was handled, this was very much so one that if you don't know the folklore, like me, this is still extremely enjoyable. But if you do know the folklore, I think it is a very cool insight into what this author pictured, all of the behind the scenes things happening. And so I just thought this was really well done to be able to bridge that gap between people who know what this is discussing and the people who are kind of new to this mythology. So this was done very, very well. I really loved it and I'm not a historical lover. And then lastly, we are going to talk about a book that probably doesn't need to be recommended, but it does have angels and it's one of my favorite fantasy books featuring angels, and that is the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass. This is an adult fantasy romance. It's kind of urban fantasy-esque, but it is set in a fully fantastical world, but it does have the feel of an urban fantasy because we are in an urban fantasy setting. It is just not in our world. But in this, we are following our heroine whose best friend was killed a year ago, and it seems like the person that may have killed her best friends is once again murdering people. And she is teamed up with an angel to try and solve this murder mystery. And things take off from there. This is featuring a lot of different paranormal creatures, but one of our main characters is an angel. This once again features archangels as well and all of the political maneuverings of all of the different beings. There is a lot of politics in here and a lot of world building in here, but it is one of my favorite angel fantasy romances, so I, I had to include it here. So that is it for the recommendations. Like I said, this is a very broad grouping, but I had so many books on my TBR that I wanted to try out, and this felt this felt like the perfect grouping in order to make it happen. So we're gonna quickly go over the five books that are on my TBR, and then once we go over them, I'm going to read the first chapter of all five books, 
and then we are going to rank that. I, at this point, have not read the synopses, I think for any of these, yeah. So I'm going to grab my laptop, pull these books up, and we are going to go over my own TBR. Okay, so the first book on my TBR is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley, which is the only traditionally published book on this TBR. This doesn't come out until March 7th, but I do have an arc of this. So this is going to be the first one that we read. And I know nothing about this. I 100% requested this because of the cover. <laughs> so let's quickly read through the synopsis figure out what this is about. Marielle knows not to trust a demon, especially one that wants her soul, but what's a witch to do when he won't leave her side and she kind of doesn't want him to? It says her heroine is prophesied to be the most powerful witch seen in the centuries, but to the displeasure of her mother, she prefers baking to brewing potions. When a spell to summon flower goes very wrong, our heroine finds herself staring down a demon, one she accidentally summoned for a soul bargain. Our hero is a legend among demons, but his reputation has suffered ever since a bargain went awry. If he can strike a bargain with our heroine, he will earn back his deadly reputation. As the two of them struggle with their opposing goals and maintaining a fake relationship, real attraction blooms between them. But our hero has a limited amount of time to strike the deal, and if our heroine gives up her soul, she'll lose all of her emotions, including love, and that will spell disaster for both of them. This sounds adorable. So fake dating, grumpy sunshine, opposites attract. I love it. The second book is called The Sinner by Emma Scott. I, I don't remember how you found this. I had been looking at this author quite a bit because I had asked for some recommendations about like angsty books and everybody and their mother was recommending Emma Scott to me and I think I just kind of stumbled upon it from that. Um, so I don't know anything about this. The synopsis says that our heroine lives a quiet life in New York City, working for a nonprofit and keeping to herself. She goes home to her empty apartment. Her lonely heart seeks solace in the tales of passionate, enduring, all-consuming love. But more and more, she feels like she's not reading for pleasure, but searching for a lost piece of herself. One day, she discovers a dead body in an alley behind her apartment. Because the dead body isn't very dead, and suddenly, her little world isn't so little, but one in which dreams feel like memories, in her demons actually lurk in the alleys, and a beautiful creature of darkness with amber eyes and wings like night might hold the key to what her heart has been aching for. Paranormal love story of passion, sacrifice, and soul deep love of a lifetime. Sounds like a good time. After that, we have one that I want to say was recommended by Stephanie from Teacups and Tropes. I get tons of recommendations from her. I'm fairly certain she recommended this one to me, but I could be making that up. And that is Revelations, the first book in the Fire and Broomstone series by Nicole Knight. All I know about this as of right now before reading the synopsis is that it is an M.M. Angel romance. Um, it says, Riley thought he knew what to expect from college, but he never planned for angels, demons, or a team of attractive and overprotective guardians. One faithful knight opens his eyes to a world he didn't know existed, and now he must navigate a host of super supernatural dangers, all while struggling with the new and confusing feelings for his guardian angel. I'm gonna stop right there because it literally doesn't even matter what it's about. So that sounds amazing. Um, then we have Hot as Hades by Alicia Rye, which is a book that's been on my TBR forever. Um, this is a, a short Hades and Persephone story. I follow Alicia Rye everywhere on social media because I think that she's fucking hilarious. And now that this is available, again, I really want to give it a read. I, as far as I remember, this is a pretty old romance. And it was only in the last year that she made it available again. But I think it's like 100 pages. So that's that one. Hades and Persephone retelling. I'm not going to read the synopsis because... We all know that story. And then lastly is one that I think I got from Mariah, from Mariah Reddit, which again, I could be making that up, but <laughs> it's Galen by Jacqueline. Is it Jacqueline? It might be Jacqueline. Um, this is the first book in the Sons of the Fallen series. And again, all I know about this is M.M. Angels. So let's read the synopsis. Um, it says, our hero finds a small mysterious box that's probably haunted and his shop is broken into by the hottest man he's ever seen who steals said creepy box. Now demons are after him and his only hope is to trust the tall, muscled, combat boot-wearing thief who claims to be the son of a fallen angel. Perfect. I love it. We're gonna stop right there. That's all I need to know. It does say it's low angst urban fantasy. 
So I love that for me. Those are the books that we are going to read. I think I'm just going to go in that order. And we are going to start with A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Holly. And I will come back to you in a little bit. Okay, so I just finished the first chapter of A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. First of all, hilarious. I captured me cracking up. This opens up with our heroine who is this prophesized witch, but she is terrible at controlling her magic. And so she keep, she messes up all of her spells. And the only thing she seems to have a knack for is gardening magic. But her family like line is a bunch of like really powerful witches and warlocks. And so they all see her as like failing the legacy because she can't do all of like the flashy things. And she is trying to practice her summoning. And she accidentally summons a live chicken. And when she tries to send it back, she makes it explode. <laughs> she makes the chicken explode. And um, it really took me by surprise and I could not stop cackling. Her mother is the worst, like the actual worst. She calls other women bitches like throughout the entire first chapter and it kind of irritated me. And then the like final little bit of this chapter was her accidentally summoning a demon because she, part of magic is intention and she is thinking about how she would sell her soul to live up to her family legacy and she summons a demon to exchange her soul with. And that's where we're left. This first chapter was super long. This does seem to have really long chapters, which isn't always my favorite. So right now I'm feeling kind of like in the middle about it. Next, I'm gonna go into, uh, what is it called? The Sinner by Emma Scott. So I'm gonna go read that and I will come back to you with my initial thoughts. So I just finished the first chapter of The Sinner by Emma Scott, and this was really interesting. So it opens up with our heroine, who is 23, and she's living in New York City, and she works for this nonprofit organization. She's just kind of like going about her life, and she doesn't feel, I don't know, like much investment in her life in all, at all. And she is a romantic, and she feels very, very lonely. And she's on her way back to her apartment after a long day, and she has to like go through this like dingy little alley in order to get to her apartment and she finds a man like like in the alley like laying down and she assumes that he's dead and so she's like walking up to him she realizes that he has wings and she's trying to figure out what is going on and then right at the end of that chapter he wakes up and he asks her to help him so that's that a based on the author's note and stuff that i read this really explores life and deaths and everything like that so i'm very excited for that one. I think it sounds really good. So let's go into Revelations by Nicole Knight, and I will come back to you in one chapter. You on my shoulders as long as I'm able. Scatter monsters under your bed. Deep and abiding. Liking for you is all I need. Alrighty, so I just finished the fur the prologue and the first chapter of Revelations by Nicole Knight. And this was <laughs> also really long. The author's note does say that this is extremely slow burn and that this is like a multi-book series in order to get to the happily ever after, which I did not know. So this one would be a commitment. This also is pretty dark. It opens up where we are following these demons and there is a sexual assault. It's not detailed because it, it like just ends as the book opens up, but we open up with this pack of demons that are attacking this angel and they are trying to figure out where her child is. And you don't know why, but they are essentially torturing her, trying to figure out where this child is. And something happens and she causes this massive explosion and she's gone. And then we flash forward to, I assume, present day. 
and we are following our hero Riley and Riley has grown up in the foster system and his last foster mother was extremely religious and because of that he's lived a very sheltered life in certain ways and then in other ways he's been exposed to too much because he's a foster child and so he has certain things that he's very uncomfortable with including like human touch just like very platonic human touch like shaking hands giving hugs things like that and like he won't go into people's rooms and he just he has a lot of boundaries because of the environment that he grew up in and he has this terrible roommate who is just the worst. I can tell like that's going to be a little difficult to read because the terrible roommate makes so many queer phobic comments in the beginning first chapter. It was it was a lot a lot of queer phobia um, but our hero has this friend who's an RA and right at the beginning of the book he walks in on his best friend having sex with a girl and um, he leaves the room and goes to hang out with his RA friend and when he comes back to the room the roommate is a total dick and like that's the first chapter so you just kind of see him get yelled at by his crappy roommate and you kind of like learn a little bit about our hero's personality so I'm assuming that he is the angel like that that's my guess but I I don't know that. Next I'm gonna go into Galen by Jacqueline Osborne. I'm assuming it's Jacqueline. I feel like that makes the most sense so I'm gonna find that and we'll read the first chapter of that one. Hopefully it's not also 20 minutes long because my husband comes home in 30 minutes. Okay, so I just finished Galen and I'm obsessed with this. This is following seven half angels and they are the manifestations of the seven sins and they are the sons of Lucifer. They work for Azrael. They locked up Lucifer many, many years ago. And now their sole job is to contain demons. A lot of demons keep popping up in the same location and they assume that it is because of some sort of cursed artifact and they, they are going, they're going to solve that. I am hoping that there is a book for each of the brothers. I have read, um, I don't know, 4% of this book and I love Sloth with my whole heart. He's just this sleepy, small little guy. I love him so much. But in this one, we're following Wrath. I'm kind of obsessed with this. I want to binge this whole series right now. And then the last one we're going to read is Hot as Hades by Alicia Rye. So I'm going to go do that now because my husband will be home any minute. You will grow up in the blink of an eye and move out and be on your own. But no matter what comes your way, Okay, so I just finished the last book, which was Hot as Hades by Leisha Rye. We need to quickly rank these. I think in the fifth place, I'm actually going to go with Hot as Hades. This just didn't do anything for me. And I talked about this in, I think it was my Katie Robert video, but I think I'm just burnt out on Greek myth retellings. I, I just, I didn't, I didn't care very much about this. Um, it's really short, so I will read this at some point. I do own this. I did purchase this with my own money, so I will read it. I'm just not like especially drawn to it right now. Um, I had a hard time after that. I think in the next spot, I'm gonna go with Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. I found this really funny, but the chapters were really, really long, and I just... I'm not feeling particularly drawn to this one right now either. In the number three spot, I'm putting Revelations, and part of my hesitation with this one is just because it is a slow burn, long series, and so as much as I liked that first chapter and I'm super intrigued, I don't think I want to commit to this type of thing quite yet, so that's going in the number three spot. The number two spot, I ended up putting The Sinner by Emma Scott. I really want to read this one, even though that first chapter like didn't give much. I really liked the writing style and I'm very intrigued by that first chapter. But in the number one spot, I had to go with Galen by Jacqueline Osborne. I so want to read this. There's something about the seven deadly sins always pulls me in. The Necessary Evils has it in like a really light take and I just, I love, I love anything that has to do 
with like the manifestations of the seven deadly sins. And so I, I really want to read this. I really want to read it. I am excited to get back into it. So that is going to be the second book for the TBR. I'm going to pop up right here what our current TBR is. So, so far we have Haunted by Christina C. Jones and Galen by Jacqueline Osborne. Apparently we're going for a one word title theme. So we'll see if that continues. But the next video coming next week, Monday, is going to be all about monster romances. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye!